then got myself a little sweaty down. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, the superintendent will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Items for board discussion, the budget and staffing. Um, who on the board would like to start? Yes. So Jeff, could you tell, um, tell us um, in reference to the federal money of the one point, almost nine, just under 1.9, how we have to use that and over what period of time? Sure. Uh, basically, it's, uh, yeah, as you, you mentioned, it's a little over $1.8 million, almost $1.9 million. Um, we have, there's two pieces to it, uh, a couple of different rules regarding it, but basically it's um, intended for COVID-related type expenditure, uh, expenditures. Um, there's plenty of them that we can use it for. That's not a problem. Um, some of the money has to be used for loss of learning, so like, our plan would be things like homework clubs, some uh, extra, uh, some for uh, summer programs, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we don't have much restriction on spreading it out over a period of time. Some districts who are, you know, if you remember uh, from the reports that were in the, new, uh, in the news about how much other districts got in federal aid, uh, they got so much that they have to spread it out over a number of years. Uh, we didn't get anywhere near that. So um, we could use it all in this coming up year, uh, which is certainly what our plan would be if, um, uh, if we don't have a past budget, then we would absolutely plan on using all of that one point, almost $1.9 million in this coming up year to offset uh, not having a past budget. Um, ideally, I would spread it out over two years just to provide more long-term uh, stability. Um, but that, that's, that's where we're at. We don't have a whole lot of restrictions as to, uh, as I mentioned, we, we can use it all in one year. Some districts can't, but only because they got so much more, but we got nowhere near that amount. amount. So, the, so the, qu the, question at, the question at hand here is um, what to do now that the, that, the, that the budget went down and that the community elected not to um, we, we didn't achieve the 60% threshold required to pierce the cap. So, you know, my take on this is that there, there does seem to me to be something fundamentally undemocratic about requiring um, 60, a 60 point X percent uh, to, vote, to vote for something because it takes, it gives more weight to a no vote than to a yes vote. Um, and so, despite the fact that we had an almost 59 percent, close, close to 59 percent of people who wanted to uh, support the budget that we constructed, uh, uh, less, than a third of, less than a third of the people who voted um, against it would get to decide the fate of our academic program next year. So there's something uh, that seems fundamentally undemocratic about that to me, A. And B, um, I think that although nobody wants to see their, their taxes increased, um, we do as a board have to take into account uh, we're responsible for being the stewards of the long-term financial stability of the school district. And we, we um, by staying open, we paid a, a staggering amount of money to be able to achieve what we did. and. You know, we we've got to, We've got to cover that, and uh, if we want to be able to do a lot of the things for next year um, that could be at risk because of all the money that we put up this year, the budget that we carefully constructed the the first time needs to go forward. So, you know, I I'm, I'm personally I'm in favor of going back out and try it again, and I think that 
let's let's give people a, a, one more chance. We're hearing from a lot of people who are very disappointed that it didn't pass. And I think that the responsible thing for us in being stewards of the long-term health of the district is to, is to give one more try. If it doesn't work, obviously then we'll go to contingency and we'll do the best we can to uh, protect our educational uh, offering. That's my take. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Vinny. It's difficult when you try to pay, uh, pierce the cap because you're putting a lot in the hands of the taxpayers because you're saying, well, you know, we need that 60%, which in my opinion is not a fair number. To me, when you see 58, 59% of the community voting for a budget, the community really speaks. However, because of laws, we fail a budget. Having been with the students for many, many years and sitting here, I want what's best for all of you. I don't like taking programs from you. I don't like diminishing programs. You have so many wonderful uh, courses that are out there in all grade levels. We wouldn't want to see that hurt. So in my opinion, by 1.2, 1.3%, I will still say, Let's try it once more, and let's bring it up to the community to see what's best for all of you. And that's where my, uh, my vote stands. Well, I agree with both of you. I feel that 42% of the community should not determine what we keep and what we don't keep. But I don't think it's inherently, I think it's inherently unfair. Um, I would like to see us go back again with the same budget. Hopefully this time people will get out there and vote and the budget will pass. So that's my opinion. Um, any other comments or input? I agree as well. Um, the students need the best of the best and everything that we are we have been providing um, so I think what we give the community um, another vote and then <clears throat> whatever that is we will go from there but I think it's uh, it's absolutely worth um, you know speaking to that 58 percent and seeing where um, where the next vote will will bring us so that we can keep everything um, the way it is um, and, and better, because our students only deserve the best. Is it better, Sitch, did you wish to? I, I just want to thank you for your support. Um, we worked very hard in putting this budget together. We believe in this budget. We still believe in this budget. And we, we are very hopeful that our community will come out in support. Um, we want and we have since day one felt that what was best for our students and we proceeded that way when many other school districts made other decisions that were different from what we put for forth and so I want to thank you I, th I think we go straight ahead and we do the best we can and should the budget not be successful we will do everything that we can as we have in the past to mitigate the impact for our students because they have to come first Okay, so that brings us to, do we have a motion? So moved. Mr. Vizzo, do we have a second? Mrs. Bozlinka, any further discussion? So we are moving to go out at the same budget that was just a revote for the 2021-2022 um, school budget, okay? All in favor? Okay. Okay. Now we're up to items for board action. Resolution to nominate individual for the Everett R. Dyer Award. Anybody? Do you want to, should I talk about this? Okay. 
um, just for the community to know, the Ed Everett R. Dyer Award is for Distinguished School Board Service. It is given by NISBA, New York State School Boards Association, and they take nominations, and we hereby nominate William F. Connors, Jr. for this award. Mr. Connors served this community for 21 years on the board, and we feel his, certainly many of those years he was president. Uh, we feel that he certainly should be honored in this way. Um, so I would like to make the motion, actually, to um, nominate William F. Connors. Do we have a second? Mr. Rizzo? Any? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? We got it. Informational items of interest, are there any? We, we have two items that were mm -hmm. in the change to the meeting agenda. That was B and C that you have. What is it? B and C. Okay, this is item. This is. Item C, is this B? Okay, item B, resolution to revote. Um, I need a motion. Hello? We need a motion. For the revote. Second, this is the linker. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Then we need resolution approving public notice, correct? This is for the public notices that have to be published with, uh, within the legal timeline. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Now, am I right? <laughs> now I got it. Got it. Informational items to the board. I just have a question. This, this revote in June, is it the same format or are we changing it or is it the same at the three? No, it's going to be different this time. So um, instead of voting at the different um, schools, all the voting will be done at Ward Melville High School and it will not be done by election district. It will be done by alphabetical order. Uh, so, and the whole, um, the, the north side of the parking lot will be closed off just for voting on that day. So the high school right and um, the, the date is uh, required by law it's third Tuesday of June and same time as the other vote 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. right so basically um, because um, the board has voted um, to put the budget back up again a budget hearing must take place um, that will take place on Wednesday um, June 2nd at 7:30. And the meeting of June 16th, which was going to be our June meeting um, for the Board of Education, will be moved to the 15th. We will do a full meeting that evening. That brings us to public participation. Board of Education meetings are business meetings that take place in public. They are not public meetings. Public participation provides an opportunity for members of the community to address the board and administration. Public participation will last for 30 minutes. Each speaker will have three minutes. People wishing to speak should fill out a blue sheet with their name, address, topic, and additional contact information. Speakers may also provide to the district clerk written statements which will be distributed to the board. Board members and administrators will not engage in dialogue with speakers at this time. Board members or administrators may contact individual speakers with answers to questions and additional information as appropriate. 
negative comments about individual staff members or students will not be permitted by law. All personnel matters are confidential. So having said that, I will recognize for the next three minutes Maddie and Joseph Mastriano of the Three Village Lemonade Stand group. And just note it's 7.49 p.m. Yes, dear. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Mastriano. On behalf of my sister, Maddie, and I, I wanted to take a quick moment to publicly thank our community and the Board of Education, Mrs. Germano and Mrs. Pesic, for supporting the Three Village Kids Lemonade Stand for nine years in a row. When we started this back when I was eight and Maddie was 11, I always said we would keep doing this until I graduated. Well, this June I graduate. Yes, in fact, this August will be our last lemonade stand and without the help of the district, this probably wouldn't have been possible. This year, we are proud to announce that the following students, some of who are here tonight, are student representatives at each of the schools in Three Village. Ward Melville, Luke Jacobino, Richard Cryjack, Ebony Shields, Jelinas, Ashton Hopkins, Gabe Peritori, Brian Shamel, Murphy, Katie Hansen, Brielle Norton, Caden Lachella, Isabella Parenti, Arrowhead, Nadia and Julieta McKee, Jordan Stiles, Nasake, Courtney Deverna, and Haley Leapley, Minasaki, Maddie Butler, Addie Scott, Charlotte Theodorakis, and Olivia Montalise, Mount, Emma Reese, and William Jackson, and Giovanna Parenti, and Setauket is Anthony Eilenberger and Ryan Gitto. Each, oh, I'm sorry. Each school is working hard on trying to raise the most money as they try to earn the Lemonheads of the District title and trophy. To date, we have raised more than $109,000 for the Stony Brook Children's Hospital Child Life Program, and we hope that everyone saves the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we hope everyone saves the day for Monday, August 9th at Murphy Junior High School for one more cup of lemonade with us quickly like to present the board with a certificate of our appreciation girls you guys can bring it of our appreciation as well as flowers to Mrs. Germano and a lemon tree to Mrs. Petisich and congratulations of her future retirement go help them as well as a reminder of how she helped us thank you I've had the um, true pleasure privilege of getting to know Maddie and Joseph and their family and talk about um, a, a complete act of altruism and collaborative effort in bringing a community together for such a noble effort is really something quite remarkable and you deserve so much credit and praise to all of you to the two of you and to being able to bring such a cohesive event together and what you've done for the Stony Brook Hospital is beyond words. So I think they deserve a standing ovation for what they've done. And thank you for the lemon tree. I'll real, lemons are my favorite. Joseph, are any of the other students speaking? Or okay, so okay, if you would like to leave at this moment, you f you may feel free to do so. We really appreciate you coming to the board. We know many of you are up early, so um, we would not be insulted if at this moment you decided to depart. But you're certainly welcome to stay, <laughs> always. Thank you. Now I'd like to recognize Ivanka Trekenko. I, I'm sorry, I'm killing your name. Uh, Ivanka, who wants to talk about uh, Red Melville Theatre faculty. Is she here? 
Uh, hello, everybody. I have some uh, written things. The back of them is just everybody's signature. And uh, we have a lot of copies of the same letter. So uh, do I just bring those to here? Hello, my name is Ivanka Tkachenko, and I'm the president of Stage Crew, along with being the lighting director for two years and a member for three. I'd say my position is lighting lead on paper, but that's not what I am. I'm the lighting director. For the past 17 years, Mr. Rogers has welcomed and encouraged students to take up real positions of responsibility and power. We are the engineers, and we are the designers. It seems that the proposed changes to the roster forget one thing, the students. The school musical is a student-led musical. We are in charge of the audio, the lights, the sets, and this responsibility is why we are all here tonight. We are here to fight for the right to participate as uh, more than just mere pawns in the musical, but as the cast and crew. Miss Contino's and Mr. Rogers' bond isn't just between them. It's the environment that they create. There's a reason why almost every st stage crew member's college essay was about stage crew. This is our life. The only consolation I had for not having this next year was being able to visit. But I don't have that anymore. None of us do. Yesterday, I sat with Mr. Rogers and decided with him that what lighting equipment would need to be rented. Yesterday, I sat on the curtain of the stage with Contino, showing her our options and hearing out what vibe she wanted for each scene. I only come into crew is, a, is one of the most common expressions I hear for my members, rather, my friends. The only reason why I am going for a double major in math and physics is because of the numbers of questions my position in stage crew generated for me, which manifested into a love for high energy physics. This isn't just me. Raj created a community of inclusivity and love, where no matter who someone is or what their background uh, was, they could partic participate in the show. He protected us and teaches us and makes sure that we're okay every day. There's a reason why the tech office is the only office in the school with the door always open, and that reason is Mr. Rogers. There's a reason why he has a value pack of water bottles in his office, and that reason is us. And after all he has done for us, from feeding us to consoling us with the stories, we cannot stand idly by as something he loves so dearly is taken away from him. Delegating as much power around and stripping Contino's title as director is like downgrading from the current constitution to the Articles of Confederation. We need a strong director who knows what they are doing. This isn't a dictatorship with... Um, uh, with Contino in the center, as many are inclined to believe. We are a federal union with Contino as our president and the students as our cabinet. To impeach her after 37 years of service, 37 uh, years of her pouring her heart, her soul, and money out of her own pocket is devastating. This decision is not only detrimental to the quality of the show, but also to every single student participating in the show. Thank you. Okay, funny. Funny. Bazanian. Is she? Honey. Hi, um, I'm Ani Vardanian, and I've been a member of the Word Melville stage crew for the past two years. I'm here to speak of the huge impact that this club, and specifically Mr. Rogers, has left on me during my time here. Um, his passion for all these shows has made me so much more excited to take part of the show every year. And this passion mostly stems from the fact that he is able to spend all of his summers designing for these shows ahead of time. He dedicates so much of his time and his energy into these shows, and that passes on to us when we are being part of his crew. He takes so much care of us. He gives us the responsibility, and he, um, like he gives us these positions of power, and in the actual club itself, he lets us lead. He lets us lead projects. This year, I've been able to lead so many building projects, support so many of my fellow like underclassmen, and teach them these things that I've learned for the past three years. These are things that I never thought that I was capable of doing until I joined Stage Crew for Steve Rogers. He was my teacher, and that's why I joined the club. And his impact on me has uh, impacted my entire future. Because of him, I've decided to go to school for engineering. I got in accepted into Cooper Union which is a top school, and I never thought I'd be able to do that. I never thought I'd be able to come here and speak in front of the board for how much, uh, like, the influence that he has left on me. And this is something that's going to be taken away from future students if he's not in this position, and that would be a shame. <laughs> okay, Robert Shabilsky. I'll, I'll wait for other students to go. I want other students to have the time to talk about Okay. Olivia, Donnelly. Hello, um, it's 
it's good to see all of you again. <laughs> um, so we're kind of here tonight to just reiterate what was said, but um, this whole thing has kind of become high school drama that wasn't really necessary. Um, it's split friends apart. It's become really ugly, and we're kind of just here to prove a point that these two teachers deserve the positions that they've been in for so many years um, because it's their life. It's all they want and care about, um, and they've helped so many kids realize that that's what they want and care about, too. Um, you know, I was always interested in music when I was younger, but Linda Contino helped me realize that that's something I want to minor in in college um, and pursue because she's shown me that it's not only just, you know, listening to music, but how much it means to someone um, to be able to, like, understand a song or understand an instrument or you know their voice and be able to take that further and that's really important for people to learn and I feel like um, it's doing future students an injustice to take that away. Um, thank you. Ariana, Olivia, Hi, my name is Adriana Oliva. I joined Stage Crew in sophomore year, not really knowing the first thing about how to use a screw gun or any other power tool. My sophomore self knew nothing about Ward Melville or any clubs, but in my opinion, I think I found the best one in the whole school. Throughout my years and time in Crew, I've grown so much as a person, becoming a vital member to Stage Crew, and along the way, learning how to use just about every tool in the wood shop. Stage crew has helped me to grow into the person I am today, and I don't know where I would be without it. Not only has stage crew and the musical changed my life, but Rogers and Contino has equally has a, had as much of a positive impact on my high school career. In sophomore year, everyone in the musical went to see a trip on broad went to see prom in on Broadway. It was January, and I'd forgotten my jacket. Contino was so worried I would be cold that she was willing to give me the jacket, sh the only jacket she had, to make sure a kid she didn't even know at the time was safe and warm. And Rogers has served as a mentor and role model for me for so many years. Over my years in stage crew, he's taught me how to use so many tools, problem solve, and work as a team with others. There has been so many mornings spent together Every Saturday morning we've met, Raj has always bring us bagels he's bought himself and always has water whenever we need it. Stage crew and Rogers have impacted me so much that I took my first engineering class this year and found a passion I'm going to be pursuing in college. So many stories have been shared and memories made, all possible if we didn't have Raj and Contino. If I didn't get this opportunity, I don't know where I would be today. And not only me, not only I have been affected by this, many other kids that are here right now have also. Without Raj and Contino, we wouldn't have a passion, something we all look forward to at the end of the day. And not only is it affecting us, but future generations won't get the same love and just nurturing community that Rogers and Contino have created for us, and I think the musicals would never be the same without them. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. Victoria Lada. Hello, my name is Victoria Amato. I am here in support of Mrs. Contino and Mr. Rogers. My brother Sean Amato wanted to be here but could not, so I will be reading this message he wrote on his behalf. My name is Sean Amato. I am an actor, singer, director. I've been performing since I was 12, and I was inspired to work professionally after meeting Linda Contino and performing in the shows directed by her. I was scared to pursue acting, mainly because I had previously played football and other sports and was unsure if I was comfortable switching over to the arts. 
Mrs. Contino provided me with the space and comfort to pursue my passion freely without judgment. She is not only a gifted director, she is a friend to those she works with. There have been many laughs shared with her on and off stage. To her, we aren't just students she teaches professionally, we are loved ones that she cares about. My fondest memories of high school involve Mrs. Contino, from dinners with the Camerata Choir to dress rehearsals for the musicals. There is a specific moment that comes to mind when I think of the passion Mrs. Contino encompasses. Compassion, sorry. When I was a senior, while on the Camerata Ithaca trip, I had a personal matter that visibly affected me, and I was truly upset. Linda Contino took me aside, sat me down, talked me through it, listening to the matter at hand, and helping me to solve it. But that conversation wasn't all. She consistently checked in on me after that day, and it meant everything to know that she truly cared and was there for me. Linda Contino has taught me things that I carry with me to this day, examples being how to act professionally once you enter the room, always paying attention to every detail on stage, committing to the character no matter the role, that on time is late, and of course to remember your pencil. She has instilled an irreplaceable work ethic that no teacher nor college professor has matched. Over the course of the last few years, I have assisted dance classes at Cortland Performing Arts Institute. While teaching these classes, I've used techniques that I've observed from working with Linda Contino. Even today, her lessons resonate and continue to inspire me in my work. Earlier this month, I graduated SUNY Cortland with a degree in mu musical theater. I am an artistic director of the Cortland 1890 House Museum Theater, where I'm putting up two shows, and I have worked in several theaters over the years. With that being said, I have yet to find a director that is willing to put so much of her own blood, sweat, tears, and money into a show without hesitation. She never settles for mediocrity and always brings out the best in her students. Never has a person showed more passion for a production that I've been a part of than Linda Contino. I credit much of my success to the teachings of her, and I encourage this decision to be reassessed. The removal of her position in the show is an insult to her 37 years of theater at Ward Melville and an insult to me and others who look up to this inspiring, caring, and respectable woman. Mrs. Contino and Mr. Rogers have provided a space for us to make lifelong memories and friends. They are the perfect representation of a cohesive team, and together they've created a space like no other, and they deserve to keep their respected positions. Thank you so much for your time. Chase Carpenter. The day we are informed about the whole Miss Contino situation, a senior from our high school made a petition called Keep Linda Contino and Steve Rogers as head of the War Melville musical. The goal was to get 100 signatures, but we surpassed that and now we have 402. Here are some of the comments of current students, past students, and parents. Linda Contino is the best musical director in Three Village. Removing her as director would be a disservice to the students and community. Both Contino and Rogers have shown immense dedication to the shows and they are deserving to continue their work. Rogers and Contino are what our shows are worth watching. The reason why Warren Melville plays are still outstanding is because of the dedication Contino and Rogers have. They push the cast and crew to do their best and have fun with it. We have put on outstanding shows because of how dedicated those two are. Without Rogers, his sets wouldn't be half as good. And without Contino's dedication and love towards each and every show, our plays would not, like, not be like what they are. There is none better suited to direct a school musical than Linda Contino. For decades, she has moved. She has made the way for Warren Melville High School's musical as far as above the average school. She creates a cast and production to rival and often surpass many local theaters. This is a wrong move for the Three Village. After graduating high school, I continued to college and received a BFA in theater and working on Broadway. A large companies and opera, uh, opera houses around the country. All of my prior experiences came from this Three Village Theater Productions and working with Linda. This does not sound like a decision made in the best interest for students and for f students or to foster a positive atmosphere. I myself am a high school chorus teacher and theater director. My experience in her class and productions established my personal standards for what high school students are capable of. I would not be where I am without the tools and love of performing arts she directly fostered. Please do not deprive this next generation of such a beautiful gift. Lynn Contino was a choral director when I graduated 31 years ago. She really cares about her students and goes above and beyond in musical theater. Please keep her as a director and th of the theater program. Those are just some of the comments, and I beg you to do what the petition says. Keep Linda Contino and Steve Rogers as head of the Warren Melville musical. Robert Shabilsky. Uh, it's really upsetting to hear all these kids speak tonight. You know, I'm tearing up, trying not to. But. All right, so unfortunately, the situation regarding Mrs. Contino 
has not appropriately been addressed yet. I know this is new, but it's imperative that we get ahead and do what is right. Um, last week after the meeting, Mr. Bernhardt commended the students who spoke, but explained that this information was an internal confidential faculty recommendation and was not appropriate that students were aware. We were told by speaking at the board meeting, we appeared to be quote, weaponized. The next day in school, it was brought to my attention by students that they had access to a staff email pertaining to the restructuring of the musical. I was, ups I was upset to see this and brought this to the attention of our principal, Mr. Bernhardt, and told him it was, and it was told by him it was inappropriate students had this. In fact, there is documentation that the email was given the green light to be forwarded to students. Why is an internal confidential faculty recommendation being discussed amongst my fellow peers and students and having the pot stirred further? Why are students being put in a position that is leading to a hostile learning environment among their peers? The unrest is palpable and must be addressed immediately. Friday, May 21st, there is a players rehearsal after school. The first 27 minutes of which turned into a forum to discuss the ongoing situation amongst the club advisor and the students in attendance. Um, club stipend money was brought up and discussed, and I, I don't know how a teacher's checkbook is anyone's business, but it was broadcasted to the students, and it's extremely obscene and disrespectful. In addition, Mrs. Contino was compared to duly impeached former President Trump and the deathly insurrection that he led at our nation's capital January 6th. There's no comparison between the two. Mrs. Contino has stayed out of the situation after confirming what the students knew because of the leaked email. Let me be clear, under the new restructuring, the leadership in the musical Mrs. Contino would not be the musical production director. It would no longer be her show. Why now, after all this time, would we structure the Ward Melville musical, more so as Mrs. Contino is on the back end of her career and on her way out to retirement soon? Look at it this way. If Ward Melville was restructuring and Mr. Bernhardt was handed a green polo to become a security guard, why would that happen? Although a security guard is a vital position, it's not what Mr. Bernhardt is, he's a principal. Mrs. Contino and Mr. Rogers are directors for a reason. Because of their commitment to the program over the years, the love and support they show to the students, and the product they help put on the stage. It disappoints me that an educator of 37 years in our district is being pushed out of her current position she has had for decades. I don't know who made this decision or why, but I'm asking you, the board, to open an independent investigation in hopes of finding a resolution. I firmly believe that Mrs. Contino and Mr. Rogers should remain in their current positions within the musical that they have held for years. As you can see from the students and alumni speaking tonight and have written letters to you, the board, Mrs. Contino and Mr. Rogers are the heart and soul of our productions, and in order to keep the integrity of as such, they should get to take their final bow when they feel their time has come. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. Brian Latham. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you, um, and I want to thank you for your leadership in this past year. This has probably been the most difficult year of school leadership that any of us have ever dealt with, and I think you guys have really done a commendable job, so I want to start off by saying that. Um, I actually uh, am a teacher in a nearby district, and I've been pretty jealous of the continuity and stability that my own children have had in this past year, um, and I'm here to speak to you about two areas of potential chaos that are kind of appearing in the community. Luckily, I don't have to talk about much for one of them because you've addressed it in the beginning of the meeting. Thank you for putting the budget up again. I appreciate you doing that. I think it's the right decision. So that's the first thing. <laughs> um, secondly, um, and, and this is something that I know has been at issue in the community, which is the question of masks in the buildings. Uh, as a teacher, I can tell you that the very worst time to introduce chaos into a school building is June. June is already chaotic. June is already a complicated situation and a difficult time period. Um, there is a small but very vocal segment of our community that is suggesting that we completely eliminate masks for students and teachers immediately. Now, September is a different situation. You guys will have plenty of time to consider that before then. Um, the decision to make a, a change right now would potentially endanger the youngest students who cannot be vaccinated and those students who are susceptible to diseases and in other situations where they cannot get vaccinated. This would also introduce chaos into the building. And I actually saw this in person today in my own district where uh, the policy on unmasking was adjusted. And I witnessed staff arguing with students, staff arguing with staff, three separate emails all trying to clarify the new masking procedure. Um, I have to tell you, it was not an enjoyable day in the building. Um, and I'm afraid that that kind of chaos could be introduced into the district. 
Um, many of us parents made decisions about keeping our children in school multiple times throughout the year um, uh, based upon what we believed the building climate was going to be like, you know, what we thought was going to be the position of the building. Um, and we chose options based on that. I'm here today to tell you that I believe that there's a silent majority in this district who's very happy with where the masking policy is at the moment for the remainder of the year. September is a time to reevaluate that. But I think that there are people who don't vocalize as much because we're pretty happy where we are, quite frankly. Um, as a final note, I would remind you that the CDC has not altered its interpretation of the necessity for mask wearing in schools. Um, and Dr. Fauci has set you know, a vaccination rate of 70% as the safe marker, which, which we have to get to. New York was at 51% today, Suffolk County is at 53%. And it is my understanding, I may be wrong about this, and if I am, I apologize, uh, that guidance came out just today from Gregson Piggott, the Department of Health Services, and that recommendation stated, the Centers for Disease Control and New York State Health Department have both been clear that existing school guidance should be followed through the end of the year. This includes universal mask wearing, even if students are spaced six feet apart. So I appreciate what you have done throughout the year, and I hope that you continue the steadfast leadership that you have done so far. Thank you. Jennifer Anderson. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me speak tonight. I want to um, let everybody know that I was asked to uh, read a letter that was written by 10 Ward Melville High School students who wish to remain anonymous in fear of repercussions. So these are, these are their words. Um, as rising seniors at Ward Melville High School, we can confidently say that wearing a mask all day has caused tremendous grief. Normally we are confident, friendly, and enjoy talking with kids in class. That has changed due to mask regulations and computer usage. Having to sit behind a screen all day for nine periods has curtailed our ability to work with others, make social connections, and enjoy school. Google Classroom sucks. Adding a mask to my day is even worse. Our faces are hot, sweaty, glasses fog throughout the day, and sadly, we can't even smile at people. This is not how high school should be. This is not how your high school experience was. Enough already, we do not want masks. We beg you to make it optional. Fact, we get screamed at in the hall if we pull our masks below our nose so we could finally breathe. We never get mask breaks in class and some teachers have told us to sit in the hall if we want a mask break. No, 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 this is not right. Fact, teachers and students can get the vaccination so please don't say this is for our safety, it is not. We can get vaccinated and move on with our lives in our senior year. Fact, our school sports and clubs are no better. We cannot even hear our advisors or coaches through the mask. Fact, I have seen firsthand students drop out of clubs because they refuse to sit for another hour and wear a mask. Fact, our beautiful and handsome faces have broken out with acne all over. Breathing through a mask is harmful and unnecessary, especially with allergies. I could go on and on. Bloody noses, nasal congestion, dehydration, and dizzy spells are common. Fact, contrary to what you may think every day, High school students are outside of school socializing without masks, going on dates without masks, visiting each other's houses without masks, playing outside sports without masks, driving together in cars without masks. Fact, I can go to a concert maskless, an Islander Games maskless, a restaurant maskless, a wedding maskless, and shop in Walmart, Costco, CVS, Kohl's, and more maskless. Fact, we love our high school. We do. Let us enjoy it. Fact. Mask wearing in school is nothing but a show. Please end it. We already did outside of your halls. Respectfully, rising seniors at Ward Melville High School. Heather Coppola. Good evening, my name is Heather Coppola. My children attend Arrowhead Elementary. I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to speak at the last meeting, and I try my hardest to make sure that I'm respectful and I'm never rude in my demeanor. Cheryl, I think you can attest to that. We've had many wonderful conversations and exchanges, but I must make mention of the fact that it was quite evident that last board meeting, there were some members who were extremely disrespectful. The huffing, the puffing, the eye rolling was extremely hurtful. 
We are thankful to those of you that were respectful. We appreciate it. That being said, I want to ask our district going forward to give parents a choice when there is an opportunity to do so. You gave the junior and senior high parents a choice with the plexiglass. Elementary parents were not given that choice. We are not given that right to choose on something that wasn't required. Other districts have made changes, and I'm not talking about masks and doors, as we know the superintendents all received letters this afternoon in regard to that from the health commissioner. I'm talking about the plexiglass on desks, masks outside during recess and gym, field day. Parents are being able to choose, but in Three Village, we are not. But you do want us to agree to pass the budget. That's over the tax cap, pay more taxes. And I will mention that a lot of people are now speaking loudly that Three Village, um, the cost per pupil is the fifth highest in the nation, something I didn't know, but it's going around out there. Not just on Long Island, fifth highest in the nation. Did any of that money go towards the plexiglass? Because you could have saved some money there by asking us if we wanted it. Because it wasn't required, you spent the money to, you, to do that. Parents deserve the choice. I would never try to take the choice away from another parent who had a different opinion than me. I would never try to take away their choice for their child. But yet, here we are why we have the opportunity for choice in some areas, yet are not able to make that choice for our children. How is that even right? Going forward, if you follow the science, you know children are not at risk because these parents um, should have kept, wait, I'm sorry. Going forward, if you follow the science, you know children are not, not at risk and parents should have the choice of what they want to do. I fully support your choice if you want to mask your child. I fully support that. Why do you not support my choice for my child? When the time comes, Three Village needs to give their parents the choice. As we know, guidance from the Department of Health changed um, for the children ages two to five, as well as summer camps. And this just goes to show you that it's not about the science because that guideline was given, there was pushback, and then it was pulled back. And now we're saying, oh no, now masks aren't required for camp, thank God. Masks aren't required for two to five. If you, it's not about the science, because if it was, that guideline would have been given and it would have stuck there. It's about control. My question is, is Three Village advocating for our children, for our children's parents to have a choice? Our district fought and filed lawsuits for older kids to play sports. What are you doing for the younger elementary students? You say your hands are tied with the Department of Health, CDC. I understand. Are you reaching out? Are you writing letters to our governor, to our legislator? Are you advocating for all the parents in the district, not just the parents that Thank you, you agree with? Thank you. Three minutes is up. Christy McGuire. Hello again, Ms. Patisic and board members. My name is Christy McGuire, and I have a second grader at Our Hood Elementary School. I would like to make two things clear tonight. The first, the district's continued refusal to accept all parents' feelings and parent choice is a complete and total inequity. As a parent, as a taxpayer, as an educator, as an American, as a human being, I find this absolutely 100% unacceptable. I find the district's refusal to pen even the simplest form letter to legislation demanding the changes to school-aged children's restrictions a total injustice to our young people. The second, and this is more personal, where I normally would never open up about medical information because I do believe it's an infringement on personal rights and laws, I feel compelled to discuss this. I have a rare blood clotting disorder. In order for me to have a successful pregnancy, one that ended with a healthy full-term child, I was required to inject myself with a needle full of blood thinning medication directly into my stomach twice a day, every day for nine months. I gave birth to two children. So I had to do that entire process on two separate occasions. It is extremely important to note that it took me losing two babies before I found that out. Two babies died. And just so you know, I am deathly afraid of needles. So my point here is that no matter what, I will do whatever it takes, however it takes, whenever it takes, wherever it takes, all day, every day, to fight for my children's rights, to fight for their lives, the lives of the two of my babies didn't get to see, the lives that every single adult in this room was afforded when, they're school -aged, when they were school-aged youth themselves. I think every single parent in this room would agree that children should have a voice, and if one doesn't, I think maybe one should question their motives being here tonight. I request the rest of my three minutes of speaking time to run out in silence in memory of my two angel babies and all the angel babies that will never have a voice, and to any and all children who have voices that are currently being silenced. Thank you. Oh, 
Alex. I can't read. I don't know. Would you pronounce it for us? Dyspanagitis. You're good. I'm used to that since kindergarten. So my name is Alex Dyspanagitis, and I have been a resident of Stony Brook for five years now. I'm coming to you all as a father and a taxpayer in this community. I'm not here to talk to you about psychological harm to children, lack of efficacy of these masks, or anything about safety of our children, as it is apparent that the school and the government does not use that as a factor when making these policies, nor do they care. Instead, I'm here to talk to you in a way that is above party lines. This is not a partisan issue. It's not a religious issue. I'm not here to say take the masks off of every child. No. At the end of the day, this is about the right for every parent to raise their child as they see fit. If a parent does not feel comfortable having their child maskless at school, it is the right of that parent to require that child wear a mask. But it is not their right, nor your right, to tell me my child must wear a mask due to your fear. Nobody knows what's best for their child as much as their parent. Why are we not pressuring the state and uh, take back, taking, to take back our freedoms? Why are schools autonomous zones? Why do schools are somehow sheltered from the fact that you can go to Walmart and it's perfectly fine? When this all began, I gave some grace and latitude as we didn't know what to expect with this new novel coronavirus. That was 14 months ago. You had me for the first two to four weeks when we were still trying to flatten the curve. We have done that. Our hospitals are not overworked anymore. At Stony Brook Hospital, we have lowest cases in the 14th month period. Mather has less than five cases. Over the last 14 months, we have come a very long way. We have the data. We have new guidances and new policies. As New Yorkers, we have had and continue to have the most absurd regulations to combat this virus. That is no longer as a big a threat as it once was or as we once thought. Children especially, during the peak, had gone to daycares and camps and such maskless while we were all able to continue to work as, as essential employees. Not only did they not spread it as silent spreaders to any of us who, are parent who parent these children, but they didn't contract it themselves. Now, I'm not a virologist. I'm not tutored in the realm of transmission of disease, but I can speak to the data given by the CDC that we allegedly like to quote. Children are the lowest risk demographic, and now as we got new guidance for under five-year-olds just yesterday, and last week over 18-year-olds don't have to wear it, it is absolutely absurd that the remaining age group, 5 to 17, uh, has to wear a mask. This is not science. The box of masks explicitly say does not protect transmission of viruses. That is science. Children walk out of the school, remove their masks, go to Walmart, Home Depot, or play with their friends maskless. The illusion that school is a sanitizing station that removes disease and keeps us all in a bubble is a farce. This is political theater, and we need to stop uh, to stand up for our children. I'm not asking every child be banned from wearing a mask. I'm asking to give us the choice that we already are endowed with as parents to parent our, ch our children as we see fit. Give the choice, not the requirement or mandate. We have allowed this pattern of irresponsibility long enough, and we are tired of it. We know our rights. We know what we have to lose. We know what is at stake, and we are not going to take it. This is the beginning. I, along with hundreds of other parents, will be signing these petitions, will be attending these meetings, will be making the noise we need to protect our children. We will pull our children out of school. Enrollment will go down. Budgets will continue to be voted down, and our voices will be heard. Because unlike the government, the unions, the schools in general, I and we care about our children's well-being and have a child and having a childhood. May we never forget who these elected officials work for. Effective immediately, we need to allow our parents to raise their kids as they see fit, and you need to fight for that as uh, the Board of Education. Thank you. I just had um, some um, small notes from elementary age school children, but first I'd like to say that um, surrounding districts, uh, Comac, Rocky Point, Miller Place, and also Center Each have eliminated their uh, petitions, uh, their desk petitions, and they also don't wear their masks while they're at their desk, socially distanced, or outdoors. These are the, uh, the notes that the children have made. My lunch aid makes me wear my mask outside when we're not supposed to wear it outside. I feel like I can't breathe, but I don't want to have to stop playing fun and games at recess, so I wear it. I wish I didn't have to wear my mask outside. Gavin, fourth grade. The plexiglass and masks should all be taken away. I want to see my friends and be able to see their faces and play with them. Anna, first grade. Masks make me feel uncomfortable because I have asthma and it doesn't let me breathe well. I don't like to wear them, and my face gets itchy, and I get a rash sometimes. Sophia, fourth grade. Wearing the masks 
make it difficult to catch my breath after walking up the stairs in school, and I can't remove the mask to, t to catch my breath once I get into class because my teacher will yell at me. 11th grade female from Ward Melville. I don't... <clears throat> I don't like the masks because I can hardly breathe or show my emotions. I just want to breathe fresh air. Mora, third grade. I, I'm Jason Finesse Jr. and I do not like wearing face masks at school. Here are the two reasons why. I can barely breathe and I should not, and I should have a choice to wear it. I'm so tired of these masks because I can hardly breathe. The virus doesn't even affect children, so why do we have to wear them still? Aren't we free to breathe? And Fresh air? It's not fair to do this to kids. Maggie, fifth grade. Wearing them in school makes no sense. No one is wearing them out of school, and we are in sports together and friends and at friends' houses. I spend all day unable to breathe for no reason. Dylan, ninth grade. It's not normal. I can't see my friends' faces, and I can't and seeing my friends' faces make me hap happy. Phoenix, third grade. Mommy, is it okay if I get in trouble to go to the principal's office today because I can't wear my mask anymore? It's too hot. Nico, kindergarten. The masks are so stupid and unnecessary. We are sitting six feet apart, but we have to wear a mask. I have to go to school and hang out with my friends and play sports, all without a mask on. What's the point? Danny, sixth grade. I should not have to wear a mask when I'm sitting at my desk learning. It's such a distraction. I can barely hear the teacher, not to mention I'm sitting behind plexiglass. It's so stupid. Becca, fifth grade. I hate wearing a mask in school. I don't wear a mask when I go to gymnastics or when I play soccer. Harper, first grade. What are the boys? One of the boys said something mean at school today. He said he Thank was you. joking. Three months Thank is you. Up. Okay, now I have three um, notices to be read into the record. This is from Sarah Frank. I wanted to write in to tell you that I strongly believe in the science behind the mask wearing, and unvaccinated kids should continue to wear them. I understand that students over the age of 12 can be vaccinated. But as we cannot police vaccination versus unvaccinated students effectively, I believe that all students and teachers in school should still be required to wear masks, at least through the end of the, la of the last month of school. Thank you for hearing me out. And this is from Jennifer Singer to the Three Village Central School District Administration and Board of Ed. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you all for keeping our kids in school five days a week since September. I feel the children of our district are truly getting the best education, and I know you all have worked tires tirelessly for them and us. I would ask you that as you continue to make decisions day by day, COVID, that you make the safety of our children a top priority. Our kids are benefiting so much from being in school five days a week. As we approach the end of the school year, we are lucky enough to be in a position where we are looking forward to some normalcy and being able to hold some of the celebrations that go along with the end of the school year. I think it would be an absolute shame to risk keeping the kids and faculty safe and possibly jeopardizing the ability to hold moving up, graduation, and other celebrations because we acted too quickly to take away safety protocols. I don't know anyone who likes wearing a mask, but if we will keep our kids and teachers and communities safe, I believe we should continue to do so in school this year. Please know how grateful my family is for the endless hours you have spent working for the benefit of our kids and community. And this is from Jennifer Singer. Then we have a statement from Stephanie Werner. With the recent lifting of mask mandates in New York State pertaining to fully vaccinated individuals only, there has been a renewed sense of mob fanaticism among parents 
who do not believe their children should continue to be masked in school. Following the last Board of Education meeting, during which several parents voiced their displeasure with our safety protocols, I was assured by Mrs. Patterson that Three Village, under any circumstances, would continue these protocols to the end of the current school year. These safety measures are meant to ensure the health and well-being of all the students, staff, and the community at large. And it is very disheartening that so many community members are blinded by their own interest. The following statement was issued regarding the changes that will be made to New York State mandate. Governor Andrew M. Cuomo announced the beginning of May 19th. New York State will adopt the CDC's interim public health recommendation <clears throat> for fully vaccinated people for most business and public settings, consistent with the CDC guidance, pre-K to 12 schools, public transit, home shelters, homeless shelters, correctional facilities, nursing homes, and healthcare settings will continue to follow existing COVID-19 health guidelines until more New Yorkers are fully vaccinated. According to many unsubstantiated sources, there are school districts on Long Island that are making changes to their mask protocols, despite the decision of the governor to continue to mandate in all pre-K to 12 public and private schools. I have placed my trust in the Three Village Central School District to keep my child safe and protected by these regulations, and I expect comprehensive follow through on the statements made by the administration in, accord in accordance with continued safety provisions and compliance with state mandate. Anything else is unacceptable and defies state guidance. As we enter the final stretch of the 2021 school year, we should be proud of the triumph we have attained through what we have termed redundant safety measures. Many families were touched by the monster that is COVID-19, and they will continue to be haunted by it for years to come. It is imperative that we finish this year with the same diligence and strength that safeguarded our reentry in September. Wishing you continued good health. Respectfully, Stephanie Werner. That's it. There's no, there's no, no discussion. Nope. Are we finished? She had a blue form. Um, I'm here to speak on uh, the. I, see it. Mrs. I get it. Yeah. We do. Um, what? My name is Alyssa Kirshner. Um, I graduated Board Mobile two years ago, and I was involved in the musical theater program for six years, my entire time that I was allowed to. Um, every single school year, uh, when I got closer, I've been involved since the seventh grade, and when I got closer to 10th grade, my fears started to kick in and made me worry about the kind of peers I would be facing in high school, considering parts of middle school didn't go so great for me. Once I got to the high school, much to my displeasure, I got bullied a lot. I was desperate to find a home in the high school, just a place where I could go and feel safe, and very quickly, Mrs. Contino took me under her wing and 100% saved my high school experience. When I got bullied during not only 10th, but 11th and 12th grade as well, I did what was expected of me, and I reached out to the school, and I asked them to help me. Unfortunately, I was told that there was not much that they could do, and that I just needed to be the bigger person. I felt that that wasn't right, and Miss Contino didn't either. She went out of her way to speak to classmates who were being disrespectful and to make her classroom and stage a warm and welcoming place. I once feared going to school, but Miss Contino began to help me, and I looked forward to school and her classes. She taught me and countless other students how to shamelessly be ourselves and to not change for anybody. I would absolutely not be the person that I am today, or as strong as I am today, if Miss Contino did not intervene in the way that she did. The environment that Mrs. Contino has created over time, over her time at Ward Melville High School, is unmatched by any other teacher, and I think that it would be a strong disservice to the students of Ward Melville to remove her from her current position. Thank you. Alyssa 
I apologize. Your form runs here. I missed it. Sorry. Okay, that brings us. Yes. Because I'm not perfect. <laughs> well, I'm the closest that you can. <laughs> Did you want to say anything? No. no. Okay, so that brings us to, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second, Mr. Lizzo, all in favor? Thank you all for coming.